the next reactions that we're going to study are related to alkenes and uh, before we discuss the reactions let's uh, discuss uh, or give a background of what alkenes are we've already discussed this in detail in in uh, previous video lectures when we were studying homologous series so alkenes have a general formula of CNH2N which means uh, which basically means that the number of carbon atoms or the, or the number of hydrogen atoms are twice the number of carbon atoms present in an alkene so um, let's uh, give you a brief overview alkenes are also hydrocarbons which means that they only contain carbon and hydrogen atoms so and the second part is the function group of an alkene or the way you're going to identify an alkene is that they contain a C double bond C functional group is always present at least one is present it could be more than one so alkenes are called unsaturated unsaturated hydrocarbons Uh, the term unsaturated hydrocarbon applies to all organic molecules that contain this carbon that contain this carbon double bond carbon uh, functional group so there's always going to be two carbon atoms in an alkene which are going to be uh, bonded which are going to have double bonds between them uh, the next thing um, and remember this term unsaturated always applies to alkenes anything which is having carbon double bond carbon if there are no carbon double bond carbon carbons present or there are no double bonds present at all uh, for example you're talking about an alkane alkanes are called saturated hydrocarbons which means that they all have all the carbon atoms are making single bonds now uh, i'm going to give you a brief uh, overview of uh, what the reactions of an alkene are going to look like uh, these reactions the name given to these reactions uh, there's a long list of reactions and the first name that's given to these reactions it's called they call addition reactions now um, addition reactions I'm going to be briefly describe what the mechanism is going to be uh, it's going to look like this that if you have an alkene let's say I have I have ethene which is this it is going to have two carbon atoms and they're going to have double bonds and each carbon atom is going to be making four single bonds so I have ethene it's going to react with the particular molecule let's say there's a molecule a hypothetical molecule it's called X XY which means that it has one X atom bonded to one atom of Y now the products that are going to be produced in this reaction is that this double bond over here this particular double bond and remember all the reactions are going to follow this particular mechanism so what's going to happen is uh, that this double bond over here is going to be converted into a single bond and once that happens uh, we're going to we're going to rewrite the molecule as it is except for the fact that uh, I'm going to highlight this again except for the fact that instead of the double bond you have a single bond now when you introduce that single bond there's one thing that's going to happen that thing is that uh, your carbon atoms if you count the total number of bonds on both these carbon atoms there's there's one bond less carbon makes four bonds over here carbon is only making a total of three bonds so it needs to make one more bond so what happens is that this molecule breaks up into two and X would bond with this carbon atom. Similarly, this carbon atom, if you look carefully, is making three bonds. It needs to make a total of four bonds. So the fourth bond would be made with Y. So Y would be added. So this is called an addition reaction. It's always going to happen in the same way. The double bond in an alkene is going to break apart and it's going to be converted into a single bond so you're going to have you're going to have a single bond instead instead of a double bond and the next thing that's going to happen is that you have um, this molecule this molecule is going to break up into two parts 
one would be added to one carbon atom because that, that carbon atom is not, not is not having four bonds it's only having three bonds and the other part of the molecule is going to be added to the other carbon atom and the same thing let's do another example with the uh, uh, let's do it with with butene or let's do, let's uh, do it with 2 methylpropene now if i have 2 methylpropene that means there are three carbon atoms this would be propene it's going to have a carbon double bond carbon and 2 methyl means that on the second carbon atom there's going to be a branch of one carbon atom so i'm going to complete the bonds now this carbon is going to make two more bonds uh, this is having complete bonds and this is going to have uh, three bonds so this molecule and i'm again reacting it with uh, let's say that i'm reacting it with xy again a molecule in which so i'm reacting it with xy again and let's figure out what the result is going to look like so again i'm going to uh, what's going to happen the first thing that's going to happen is that this double bond instead of having a double bond replace it with a single bond so redraw the entire molecule and instead of having a double bond replace that with a single bond and redraw the entire molecule as it is make no changes to the other parts of the molecule so this is how the molecule is going to look like once you have uh, once you have replaced uh, let's highlight this uh, i have replaced this double bond over here with a with a single bond so once i do that uh, two things happen this carbon atom is now no longer making four bonds it's only making three bonds so I mean, this carbon atom over here is also not making four bonds it's also making three bonds so again what's going to happen uh, this xy molecule is going to it's going to break apart x would be added to one of the carbon atoms and y would be added to the other carbon atom so that's how the, the bonds of the carbon atom are going to be completed the two carbon atoms that lose one bond when the double bond is converted to single bond they need to complete the bond so one bonds with x and the other one bonds with y so this is uh, the general mechanism of an addition reaction and we're going to go into a lot of detail and there are three four different types of addition reactions and we're going to study the conditions now the first type of addition reaction that we're going to study is the reaction of alkenes with the bro, with bromine it's also called in a called a halogenation reaction but it's most commonly known as bromination because uh, because most of the time in your exams uh, the reaction would include an alkene which is uh, reacting with br2 and the conditions for this reaction are that it so the conditions for this particular reaction are that you uh, this reaction takes place at room room temperature and it should preferably be, be performed in the dark in the dark if because if you if you don't perform it in the dark then there are chances of free radical substitution occurring which is a reaction for alkanes but a similar type of reaction is also uh, because some parts of an alkene are similar to an alkene so th those parts will go a free radical substitution reaction if uv light is present so this reaction is performed in the dark and at room temperature and pressure and uh, the other uh, important points about this reaction are that this particular reaction is also uh, considered to be a test for identifying unsaturated compounds 
So it's also it's also a test for identifying unsaturated compounds, and by unsaturated compounds, uh, this unsaturated compound, what I I'm referring to is any compound that contains carbon, double bond carbon functional group must be present in those compounds. So, so we're basically essentially talking about uh, alkenes. So any compound that contains C double bond C is an unsaturated compound. So this is also uh, used as a test for identifying uh, unsaturated compounds. So what's going to happen in the reaction, as I've de described previously in all addition reactions, what's going to happen is you're going to have an alkene. So let's uh, draw an alkene. And let's start with the simplest. Uh, I'm going to start off with ethene, which, uh, which has... which has two carbon atoms and it's going to react with bromine molecule. A bromine molecule is diatomic, it's in group seven. So there would be two bromine atoms which would be joined together. And in this reaction, what's going to happen is that uh, your double bond is going to be converted to a single bond. The rest of the molecule is going to remain exactly the same. And if you convert the double bond to a if you convert a double bond to a single bond, what happens is that these two carbon atoms, their bonds are no longer complete. Both these carbon atoms are now making a total of three bonds. So there should be one more bond which should be made with bromine. And this carbon atom would also be made, making one more bond and that too with bromine. So two bromine atoms are going to get added up and you're going to get a halogeno. alkene as a product halogeno alkene is simply an alkene which has halogens in its uh, as a substituent group the name of this molecule is going to be it's going to be um, uh, since it's uh, ethane so it's going to be ethane and it has two bromine branches so it's going to be dibromoethane and the last thing is you have to give the position. So one is on carbon number one, the other one is on carbon number two. So the name of this molecule is going to be dibromo, one, two dibromo ethene. So this is the reaction that's going to happen. And the salient features about this reaction is uh, the important points about this, about these reactions are, uh, you get a very frequent question about the observation of what you're going to observe how are you going to identify whether an alkene is present or not? So the observation in this reaction is that the red brown color of bromine, a bromine has a red brown color. So red brown color of bromine gets decolorized. it gets decolorized. So this is a very important uh, statement. You're going to be asked a lot of questions about this. So the red brown color of bromine, which is red brown, it gets, uh, this bromine is going to eventually get used up. And when it gets used up, so there would no longer be red brown color in the solution. So this red brown color of bromine is going to get used up. And one last point about this reaction uh, is before we, get, we do a few more examples, uh, one last point about this reaction is, that uh, the solvent used in this reaction so we're going to revisit the conditions the solvent used in this reaction it's uh, it's either ccl uh, it's generally ccl4 which is used as a solvent which is which is tetra uh, chloromethane and it's an inert it's a very inert non-polar solvent and as we have discussed previously, non-polar substances dissolve in non-polar substances. So CL, CCL4 is very good at dissolving bromine. And this is used as a solvent and sometimes uh, water is also used as a solvent. The reaction is going to be pretty much the same. And I'm going to do a few more examples now. Let's, um, let's do the bromination reaction for... Uh, I'm going to write down an example for two methyl uh, butuene 
So I'm going to write down the bromination reaction for 2-methylbutuene, which means the main chain is uh, is going to be butu butuene, which means that there are a total of four carbon atoms. And there's a double bond present. Butuene means that there's a double bond present on carbon number two. So there's a double bond present carbon number two and three. And there's a branch of methyl at carbon number two at position number two. So at position number two, there's a branch of carbon, only one carbon atom because it's methyl. And I'm going to complete the bonds now. So this carbon atom is going to make one more bond. This is going to make uh, three more bonds. All the carbon atoms must complete the four bonds. This has four bonds. This is going to have three more bonds. And this is being uh, reacted with bromine. So let's draw that in red color. And the result of this reaction is, as we've discussed previously, only the double bond, you're only going to get rid of the double bond and replace it with a single bond. So if I redraw the molecule, there would be a total of four carbon atoms. And instead of this double bond, I have a single bond and there's a carbon chain on this side. And if I redraw the molecule, so I'm redrawing the molecule, this carbon had one hydrogen atom, this had three hydrogen atom. Remember, do not change, when you're redrawing, do not change the structure, only get rid of the double bond. So this carbon atom has so it's, I, it's exactly the same structure, except that instead of the double bond I have, a, I have a single bond over here. So I'm going to circle this. This is the change that I made. And when I made this change, these two carbon atoms over here, these two carbon atoms over here and over here, they are now making one less bond. They should be making four bonds. But right now they're making, this one is making three bonds and this one is also making three bonds. So what happens is that bromine, gets attached, there are two bromine molecules. So one bromine molecule gets attached to this carbon atom, the other bromine molecule is going to get attached to the other carbon atom. So this is the molecule that's going to, uh, this is the molecule that's going to be formed when this reaction is going to take place. So remember this, whenever an addition reaction takes place, especially bromination, uh, the carbon, double bond carbon, replace that double bond with a single bond and to complete the bonds, you add the bromine, so which is why it's called an addition reaction. And a few more po points about other halogens. You're probably not going to be asked about other halogens, especially at O levels. Uh, but I'm going, I'm going to teach you about other halogens anyways. Uh, for example, for fluorine. With fluorine, this reaction is exactly the same, but it's an explosive reaction and it's, it's generally not it's not carried out and it has, it's, it's a pre pretty much useless uh, reaction, so not performed anyway. So uh, no questions are going to come about this reaction. With chlorine, the reaction is pretty similar. Uh, the observation is going to be that uh, the greenish yellow gets gas, since chlorine, chlorine has a greenish yellow color. So in the case of chlorine, greenish yellow gas, gets decolorized. So that's your observation for chlorine and for iodine, it's exactly the same, except that the reaction is slower. It's a slower reaction. So you would have to heat this reaction to to speed things up and the observation is going to be that iodine is brown in solution so so brown solution gets decolorized because all the iodine is going to get used up at the end of the reaction